It is estimated that less than 10% of the smuggled goods, like drugs and weapons, are prevented by the Border Patrol from entering the United States. While there are many different ways to sneak this kind of cargo into the country, we're going to focus on four main ways that smuggling operations are conducted. We think the last one is the most creative and technologically advanced method. And as you may have already guessed my next words, it's not what you think. Go-fast boats can travel at over 80 knots in calm waters and are extremely difficult to detect by radar due to their low profile. The primary way of detecting such vessels is visual detection from a helicopter or patrolling aircraft. Since most go-fast boats travel at night, you have to be at very close range to detect them. During the day, go-fast boats try to camouflage themselves as much as possible, whether it's a blue sheet covering the boat or a painted fiberglass top. The boats themselves are pretty basic, crammed with fuel, supplies, and of course, illicit cargo. In the 80s and 90s, go-fast boats were the weapons of choice because even if they were detected by law enforcement, they would just zip by them as they traveled at double the speed of Coast Guard cutters. Smugglers were so confident in their craft that they would often mock border patrol by passing close by. As a result, the Coast Guard was forced to use its own go-fast boats, a rigid-hulled inflatable boat deployed from a cutter that was fast enough to catch up with the smugglers. You would think that having their own chase boats, the Coast Guard leveled the playing field. But this was not the case, as it was very dangerous to chase smugglers who would always try to outmaneuver the law enforcement. It literally became a game of cat and mouse. For the Coast Guard, the gain was also not always worth the pain. Sometimes collisions would occur between smugglers and the Coast Guard, which put the staff in extreme risk, so a better solution was needed. In the late 90s, a proposal was put forward for the Coast Guard to start using aerial enforcement, specifically the use of aerial snipers from embarked helicopters. Originally, the Coast Guard rejected such an idea as it was viewed as a betrayal of core values of focusing on humanitarian missions such as search and rescue. But a classified trial was approved, during which armed helicopters intercepted and stopped all five go-fast boats that they had encountered, resulting in seizure of over $100 million worth of illegal goods. These trials were deemed successful and eventually a unit was officially commissioned in 1998 as Helicopter Interdiction Tactical Squadron or HITRON. HITRON helicopters would be deployed from Coast Guard cutters whenever a go-fast smuggling boat was detected. The Coast Guard would first force the boats to stop through the use of sirens and loudspeakers, but according to the servicemen, smugglers almost never complied. Not surprising. Consequently, an aerial gunner would fire warning shots in front of the bow with a machine gun. If the boat still didn't stop, an aerial sniper would start disabling the engines of the boat one by one. Once the smugglers stopped, they would be boarded by the over-the-horizon boat's boarding team, which would detain the crew, search for and confiscate any smuggled goods. By 2017, Hitron interdicted over 500 vessels and seized $17.7 billion worth of contraband. Narco submarines are the new smuggling vessels of choice as they trade speed for increased stealth. Most of them are semi-submersible, which is enough to avoid radar detection or even visual detection, especially at night. Narco submarines can cost up to $2 million to build, and interestingly, they're considered expendable vessels since after their successful operation, they're usually abandoned. They can carry up to 10 tons of smuggled cargo, meaning that each trip can generate anywhere from $100 to $400 million based on the street value of the goods. So given the return on investment, it is probably cheaper to build new narco submarines rather than risk being caught. Narcosubs are usually built from fiberglass and are powered by diesel engines. Once caught, you would assume that the crew would immediately surrender, but as you can see, smugglers persist until the very end. Some cartels operate full-size submarines which can go as deep as 328 feet and across the Atlantic. One of these submarines was seized in Ecuador in 2010. As of 2020, it's estimated that there are at least 1,000 operational narco submarines that can carry about one-third of the smuggled goods in the United States. The chances of a narco submarine making a successful trip is about 90%. Hey, we need to get them over on a boat. 
If you think the wall between the US and Mexico border can stop smuggling operations, you'd be wrong. Even if climbing over the wall was difficult, welcome to the tunnel, you can just go under it. Since 2001, over 60 tunnels between the US and Mexico have been discovered in the San Diego area alone. Some tunnels are as much as 100 feet underground and as long as 8 football fields. Most tunnels are in the Ote Mesa Warehouse District, as warehouses are a perfect spot to dig tunnel exits. Law enforcement would frequently visit warehouses and look for signs of tunnels like newly installed concrete floors. Special equipment would be used to see what's below the floor and oftentimes, bingo, there is a tunnel. Tunnels range from 3 to 6 feet in diameter and some even have railway tracks installed to help facilitate movement of the cargo. Super tunnels that span over a thousand feet can be even equipped with elevators and electric rail cars. But most of these tunnels are not equipped with ventilation equipment. And what you're hearing right now is a low oxygen alert. San Diego's soil is perfect for tunneling as it is both easy to dig through and strong enough to hold up the tunnel. The cost of digging most tunnels is estimated at about $1 million. But even after a single trip, that money can be made back and then some. Oh, we should also make this very clear. We do not endorse or recommend this line of work. It's really not what you think. Finally, narco torpedoes are probably one of the most creative ways to smuggle cargo. These are relatively low cost and highly effective as they're usually towed behind a fishing boat at a depth of about 100 feet. If the law enforcement approaches the boat, the torpedo is released, so there is very little risk of getting caught. But smugglers don't give up on their goods that easily. After a set period of time, the torpedo releases a beacon, often in the form of a wooden log with a built-in camouflaged antenna, so it can later be found and retrieved. The newest versions of these narco torpedoes are autonomous underwater vehicles, also known as AUVs, that can magnetically attach themselves to the bottom of cargo or cruise ships and travel with them to extremely far destinations. Since the travel itinerary of commercial ships is fairly well known, it's just a matter of timing it. Once the ship reaches its port, the UAV would detach itself and travel some more distance independently to be picked up by its rightful owners, I guess? Creative, right? By the way, if you enjoy our videos and would like to support us, we just set up our Patreon page. It would be really cool if you were our first Patreon.